Hello crafty friends, it's Alicia aka Call Me Crafty Al here on the Not Too Shabby channel today to show you a couple quick and easy cards using some products from the shop. I hope you'll stick around and see what I'm going to create. Thank you so much for stopping by today. If this is your first time to the channel, I hope that by the end of this video, you'll be inspired to click on that subscribe button below and ring the bell for notifications. There are a whole team of artists who share their creations here, and I know you're going to love it. If you're already a subscriber to the channel, thank you so much for stopping back by. In today's video, I will be making two clean and simple, rather easy cards using some goodies from the shop. Those are the faux embossed watercolors paper pad. This was in the recent kit, but there are some extra left over in the shop, so make sure to check out that description box below for links. A few other items in the shop that I purchased, we have the Catherine Pooler Bright Days Stamps and Die Set. And I picked up the CC Designs color splotches stamp set as well. What I'll be doing today is making a scrappy strip background and I won't be coloring any of my images. I thought I would try to use the splotches to kind of make the light shine from those light bulbs. Now, as I go along, if I add any more products or tools, I will let you know in the voiceover. Now, if you do want to check out the Not Too Shabby Shop and pick up any of these products, or lots of other goodies in their store, I do have a link below and there's a discount code you can use to save 10%. Bonus! If I leave you with any questions, make sure to leave those in that comment section below and I'll get back to you just as soon as I can. Let's get crafty! I started off by choosing a rainbow of pattern papers from the paper pad. I love the colors on these and that faux embossed texture. Now these pieces will be used for both cards today. And what I do is cut these into strips that are one half inch wide. And I am using the half inch mark on the left of my cut line just to make it easier to move from right to left as I cut them. I keep cutting the strips from this piece of paper, but you'll see that I get to a point where there's no longer any room for my fingers to hold down the paper over there. So what I do is I bring in some scotch blue removable tape. This is a very low tack tape. It will hold the paper in place while I make the cuts. And I will actually be able to use this piece for all of the pattern papers today and I stuck it on my desk to use for another time as well. I cut the rest of the pattern papers off camera but I did want to show you this beautiful rainbow of pattern paper strips. Another thing I did off camera was pre-cut some pieces for my card. This white card stock is five and a quarter by two and a quarter. The black card stock is five and a half by two and a half. And finally, I have a scrap of printer paper that was in my recycle bin that I cut to six and a quarter by three and a quarter. And I ran that through my Xyron so I had just a sheet of adhesive on the back of this piece. I will be using that sticky piece of paper as the base for all of my scrappy strips. I decided what angle I wanted that first strip to go at and I did start in the middle of the rainbow and I tried to keep it centered left and right. Next I grabbed an orange strip and I laid it down right next to the green one. You really want to try to butt that up against there as best as you can so you don't have any white showing through. You then just repeat these same steps until your card is filled up and at the end you'll have a crazy looking piece of paper but all you have to do is get out some scissors and trim off that excess. From the stamp set I chose the five smaller light bulbs and I will be stamping that onto a scrap of Strathmore Bristol Smooth using VersaFine Onyx Black Ink. I just placed the stamps onto this piece, making sure that I left enough room to die cut them later, and then I inked it up and stamped it. Now the reason I did it on the Misty is in case I needed to stamp it twice. 
it worked out well that first time, so I took this off camera to die cut each of the images. After those were all die cut, I brought in the piece of white cardstock that I had cut previously and I started figuring out where I wanted my light bulbs to go on there. Now you'll notice that there is one that's not really hanging at the top and the reason I did that is the sentiment I chose here, it says I'm really missing you. So I wanted one of the light bulbs to be different and I thought the fact that this one light bulb had a heart in the center went well with the sentiment and the idea behind my card. Once I had each of those where I wanted them, I brought in a little scrap of press and seal and I just picked these up so that I knew where they would go later because I do need to do some stamping in specific spots. I got out the little hanging cord from the stamp set. I moved the light bulbs down a little bit on that piece of cardstock, but then I did have to kind of unwrap or fold over some of the press and seal because when I stamp these, I want it to just be at the top of this white piece of cardstock, and I try to do my best to center that little power cord above the center of each of the light bulbs. Now it's time to add some color with stamps. Like I mentioned before, I will be adding that with this splotch stamp set, and I chose some light yellow Gina K Designs inks. Now originally I thought, oh, I don't want to pick a splotch that's too big and be overwhelming, but I did notice that once I got that first light bulb in place and I did my first stamp, that it didn't really shine out as far as I wanted it to. So what I did was I just kept stamping until I had an area that I thought looked good behind each of the light bulbs. While I keep stamping those splotches, I thought it would be a great time to stop by with a QOTV or question of the video. This is something I enjoy doing on my channel to get to know a little bit more about you and share a little bit more about me. I would love to know if you have ever tried the scrappy strip technique on a card before, and by that I mean how I created the background with those little strips of pattern paper. I would love for you to let me know in that comment section below, and if you wouldn't mind it, please add the hashtag, hashtag QOTV, so when I stop back by, I know that you've answered it and would like me to see it. For me, this is a technique that I do use every so often, especially when I have some scraps to use up. Once I had that shine stamped on all of my light bulbs, I brought in some liquid glue and I adhered the four that were hanging from the top just flat down onto that piece of white cardstock. Eventually, I want that fifth light bulb to pop up off the card just once again to make it stand out a little bit. But before I can adhere that down, I need to stamp my sentiment. Now I'm usually not the type of person who waits this long to stamp a sentiment, but I wanted to make sure that I got it right where I wanted it and kind of centered between the two outer light bulbs. So I crossed my fingers, I inked up my stamp, and woohoo, it worked that first time. Now I know I said I was not going to color on this card, but I did decide to go ahead and fill in that heart filament with my number 202 in my Zig Clean Color Real Brush Markers. I just put a little pink at the bottom of the filament and then I spread it up into the rest of the heart with my colorless blender. Now that all of the pieces were ready, I could assemble my card. Off camera, I cut and folded a mini slimline card base. I make mine so that when they're folded, it's six and a quarter wide by three and a quarter tall. And then I just started adhering my layers. Now everything is going to be flat on the card until I get to my fifth light bulb. For that, I brought in some foam dots. I placed some on the back and then got this popped up centered right above that sentiment. And here is a close-up look at the finished card. For the second card, I will be using those same scrappy strips, but for this one I'm going to do a standard A2, so I cut my piece of copy paper to five and a half by four and a quarter. Now something else different about this piece is how I get my scrappy strip background started.
I kind of create a pinwheel even though it only has three spokes in the center of the card and I just kind of rotate that around and fill it in just like I did before but you'll notice that the end result looks quite a bit different. You'll notice that I have quite a few strips left over and I can use those on future projects. I brought back in my Misty to do some stamping and for this card I will be using the pendant light, the hanging cord, and the sentiment that reads, thank you for brightening my day. Now I do have two different inks out because I will be stamping this light bulb onto some 28 pound vellum and the rest of it I will be stamping onto scraps of white so I got out the stays on for the vellum and VersaFine for the white cardstock. The first stamp I got out for this card was the sentiment and because I did need to worry a little bit more about placement and alignment with this, I did stamp it by itself, placing it toward the bottom of that white cardstock strip. Now for the next two images, I just needed to make sure that they were on their corresponding type of paper. So I got my pendant light set up on the piece of vellum and that power cord on the white cardstock, not really paying too much attention to where they were placed. But I did make sure to ink each stamp up with the corresponding ink. Now because the vellum is not porous, the pendant light got inked up with stays on and the power cord got inked up with the VersaFine Onyx Black. The main pieces were ready, so it is time to put the card together. The first thing I did was add a little bit of liquid glue to the front top of my pendant lamp, and then I set that off to the side for a little bit to let it dry while I worked on the cardstock strip. I needed to figure out what I wanted that strip to look like on the card front and I decided to put them to the left and because of the pendant light I needed to cut a little bit off the bottom of that cardstock strip so the sentiment would lay in a good place on the card. So I just brought in my little trimmer and cut a little bit off. I adhered the two cardstock strips together and then once I figured out where the pendant light was going to be on that, I brought back in that splotch stamp set and that light yellow ink so I could make my light shine. Once again, it took a few stamps to make enough yellow around that pendant. And now the neat thing about using vellum for the pendant is that that yellow shows through just a little bit. I like that effect and you know I love to use vellum. I did have a little camera hiccup, but the only thing you missed was me adhering the cardstock strips to the background. Now I don't really want all that excess hanging off, so I did bring in a pair of scissors to cut that quickly. And I guess I forgot you missed one other thing. I ran out of adhesive in my ATG, so instead of stopping to refill it, I just used my liquid glue and I placed that piece onto my card base because I'm gonna need liquid glue anyway to adhere down my pendant light. I added adhesive to the power cord and then to try to hide as much of the adhesive on the pendant light as possible, I tried to place it right behind where the stamped lines were. Before I could call this card finished, I wanted to add a little bling, so I brought in some light yellow gems from my stash that I thought matched the shining from the light pretty well. I placed three of those on the front and here's a look at the finished card. I hope you enjoyed seeing how I put together today's cards. If you did, a thumbs up is always appreciated. Until next time, I hope you're all having a crafty day. Bye bye. Thank you so much for taking the time to watch all the way to the end of the video. Now I hope that you'll consider clicking on one of the playlists or videos I have linked above.